this process of clearance, um, as I've suggested, there's the clearance in terms of just sensory overload. There's a clear, there's a clearance of karmic burden, um, habits, uh, memories, uh, stuck psychologies, um, unskillful karma, uh, compulsiveness. And there's the flood clearance of disposition, which is a more subtle level, but profound level of our the jitters inclination to get embedded in conditions, in conditioned realm, which is a uh, default and uh, does not lead to satisfaction, as you might have noticed, whether it's uh, physical, psychological, whatever, it leads to wanting more, needing to keep it going, um, missing out on something or the other, separation. Yeah. There's this default inclination, the inclination of the asawa, the, the outflows. Now these are all mingled together and uh, uh, you can't really immediately distinguish one from the other because it's like you're in the river, so it's just the churning and which, which stream that came from I don't know because I'm in the middle of this vortex there's all kinds of stuff which one so we're saying the first thing we try to do is to establish uh, work on the energy clearing the clarifying or stabilizing the bodily and mental energy you know so that it's no longer just thrown around and there's a sense of some stability and core presence this is process uh, samatha. Samatha can be translated as calming, but it's not soporific. It's more to do with stabilizing, giving one a firm ground. Uh, without this, one has no resilience. And resilience and the ability to, you know, to stand against the tide rather than you know, be knocked over by it is, is essential. And this, uh, where we can most readily access this is through the body. The body has its own uh, energy systems that are, uh, and uh, it can provide a, a simple and obvious um, reference point. So when the jitta, the awareness, the heart feels that bodily stability and presence, it, it gets it. It somehow, there's an, almost an osmosis process whereby the mental energy, heart energy entrains or picks up the same sort of theme as the body energy. Um, this is why it's taught and encouraged. Yeah. I'd also like to mention this is about energy. Clearly, if we're looking for stability it's about stabilizing energy, isn't it? Stabilizing that which is moving. So this is not really about sensations. It's about energy. So sensations are to do with contact, impact, impressions of stuff that the body physically touches. And it's useful because you get some clear discernment that, 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 and you notice the changing nature of things. But it doesn't really by itself cut or attend to the energies, the energies which are where the floods are, disturbance of, of um, um, emotion and uh, reflex and even trauma. Uh, and these, uh, so this is where we have to really experience the body as an energy form, not just as an atomical form or as physical twinges and sensations. This energy, then you can just imagine like the nervous system, it's nervous system in, in the Western understanding. In China, it's the meridians. In, in India, you've got the nadis and the susuma, the channels. So it's all this kind of subtle level, which is sort of called the world, the, the fine material realm. It's not coarse like a physical, but it's not just theoretical. It's a kind of subtle, 
subtle material because you can feel energy as a, almost like a texture to it. The thrust, the surge, the flood, the, jib, the shimmering and the stability of it. Definitely you can feel it has a certain formal quality to it, energy. And this so we can just imagine, you know, the whole body top to toe, in fact, beyond the physical body, like a web, you know, a web of energies that are all pulsing and shifting around um, that um, uh, are, are, are sensitive and intelligent. You know, this, is, this is the body's intelligence. This is the body's intelligence system. It, it, it shocks, it, it relaxes, it knows how to move. You can't have to tell it how to move. It knows how to operate by synchronizing its energies. Its energies then operate through the muscles. And of course, its energies also operate digestion and its energies operate the sense of being tense, nervous, on edge or feeling relaxed and comfortable and expansive. Those are energies that do that. Pretty pivotal, right? Pretty crucial, right? Did anybody tell you about that at school? Did you learn that? Or have you got believe the body is like a, an, not anatomy with organs and stuff and bones? Which, yeah, that's one way of looking at it. But this is a very intimate, subjective, intelligent body that you can learn from rather than do an operation on or put medicine inside. And, uh, and it's a, a great uh, learner, a great thing to learn from. Because what this will do, it will tell you immediately whether you're fully present or whether half of you is escaping somewhere else. It will tell you whether you feel comfortable and safe or whether you feel on guard and defended. It will tell you whether you're feeling stirred up and agitated or whether you feel relaxed. Pretty important things to know. And you know, it may sound incredible, but our thinking mind denies a lot of this. It doesn't either it doesn't notice it or it, it denies it. it. says, no, I'm feeling fine. I'm okay. I'm just, you know, and the person's obviously upset. No, no, no. Because we tend to censor it. Or we try to, the thinking mind tries to come up with how I'm supposed to be. You know, not what I'm feeling, but actually what I'm supposed to be. Um, so it just will cut all that stuff out and go up into this dissociate, somewhat dissociated state. And there's plenty of possibilities to do that you know a huge amount of society lives in dissociation most of the time uh, uh, partially embodied um, i don't think i really found my body till i was about 40 42 43 <laughs> yeah. yes it was that thing underneath me down there you know i'm up here and the body's down there <laughs> and i look at it from even when i meditate i'm up here looking at my body down there well you know where is the head set the head is part of the body where why are you up here you know the body the body's intelligent the fingertips are just as intelligent as the nose in fact they're more intelligent uh, the toes are much more intelligent than the than the earth than your shoulders in terms of sensitivity. So we're not up here, we're everywhere. With the body, the body's everywhere, everywhere that counts. And uh, as you fulfill this, there's a feeling of, oh, I feel more fully present. Also, I feel more stable. And also I do notice the, the, any fear or agitation in my body, and I check it out. And my body can sense that's okay and relax and release it, which the mind finds very difficult to do. The mind hangs on to ideas, but the body checks it out. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, and you can discharge it. This is a great way to, to drain some of the mental floods to get them to notice them and to train them by mindfulness immersed in the body. Kaya gati. 
kaya gata sati, you know, gone into gata. This is not mindfulness looking at a body from the outside, like here's sinews, here is you know, hair and so forth. This is mindfulness, you, the body, so it's mindfulness immersed in the body. It means your, your mindfulness is established as, a, as bearing presence with your body's intelligence system. And in the image the Buddha used of this, he said, you imagine you have a, a post with six animals tied to it. And one's a snake, monkey, pig, boar, I don't know, six animals. And they represent the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the tactile body, and the mind. Yeah. So the physical body and the mind. And he says, you tie all these to this inner body so they don't run away. Because they're all going different directions. You know, the ear goes one way, the thought goes another way, taste goes another way. And they're all very separate domains, aren't they? Tasting something is nothing like looking at it. Yeah. And so even the, how can you be immersed in the body and yet restraining the body? Because in a way you're talking about two different things. Your energy system, you're using that, stabilizing that so that the pull of touch doesn't pull you out. The prick of unpleasant feeling doesn't cause you to retract. Yeah. Yeah, stable, steady. And of all the sense bases, the most significant one is the mind base. This is the one that really got huge power to pull us in. Say so the mind, manas, the thinking mind, the calculating, organizing, abstracting intelligence, which we have developed to an enormous degree and can be very proficient in and take delight in. We are magicians with our thinking minds. We conjure up amazing abstractions and organize things to a profound degree. And it gets intoxicating. And it tends towards, if you get too intoxicated, you lose your body. You become like the, you know, the great scientist who doesn't really know where how to tie his shoelaces up because he's completely out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> impossible to live with because they're so involved with their own thoughts they just got no relational sensitivity this is a stereotype i'm sure there are lovely scientists who are beautiful sweet women and men you know but i'm just using this as an example okay the disembodied state um so Bear in mind, now, so this is not focusing on a point in the body, this is awareness of the entire body as a, as a, as a synchronized web. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's, it's uh, how it's coherent and how everything is connected to everything else. Now I'd like to encourage some standing meditation and we can do this for up to um, <clears throat> half an hour or so. Um, but if you're finding it difficult, you just do 10 minutes, sit down, because once you've got it, you, you can build it up. And once you've got the, the principle that standing meditation presents, because it's uh, exceptionally useful for getting the whole body, and very useful for getting the entirety, and also getting the sense of balance which is the most um, obvious manifestation of bodily intelligence, the fact that the body can balance without us thinking about it, you know, without figuring it out. It's non-conceptual. And standing meditation gets you, wakes that up. So if you can do this for 10, 15 minutes or so, and stand, or to stand in a way whereby you're, you're, not, you know, you're very balanced, then you, you get the sense of the entire uh, body as an organized system and also you're aware of the space around you and you begin to make feel comfortable in that so if you'd like to get to your feet and i for the sake of this um, presentation screen i will remain sitting but i'll 
talk through some standing meditation. And so when you're standing up then flex your knees, just give a gentle spring, slow gentle spring to make sure so your legs are woken up. Um, flex, flex your knees, uh, standing. And then slightly tilt to the left. And then tilt to the right. And feeling how the left leg or the right leg carries the weight in the foot. And then backwards. And forwards. So what you're doing with this is you're starting to encourage your body to find the balance where am I neither to the left, nor the right, nor too far forward, nor leaning back. Yeah. Now, if you can also might be helpful to, as you're standing with your legs more or less coming straight down from your hips. So it's not a wide stance, it's not pinch tight. So the legs are quite, there's an openness to the legs. Um, if you're standing, just see if you can lift yourself on your toes. So in other words, coming onto balls of your feet and your toes, lift your heels off the ground and then step back again. Do that two or three times. And what's happening, you're exercising, you're waking up your calves, your ankles and your toes, your toes lifting and then descending again to the heels of the feet. Hmm? Do that a few times. And you're actually waking the feet up because all those muscles in the feet are getting some, some exercise. Imagine the feet are in fact pretty much like hands, same sort of structure. When they're trapped in shoes all the time, they lose that agility. It's as if you had Imagine you had a box around your hand all day long, you'd lose it. Now, barefoot or just in socks, lifting on your toes, descend, and then you do that a few times. See if you can stand and lift your toes off the floor. So you, as you pull your toes back and rest on your heels without falling over. Stretching the sole of the foot. Stretching the sole of the foot. All the toes back and then lift up. Right. Nice stretch. Now wriggle your toes. Wake them up. And this is going to because when you when the body does this naturally, what occurs is the energy has to go down to the feet to do that. Uh, and this is just a very simple way of doing it. Because the energy tends by and large to be face, head, chest, belly, it's all up here. This is the action piece. And often in daily life, chairs, cars, and so forth, the legs are more or less dead, switched off energetically speaking. So bringing energy back into the legs and feet, so we greater balance. When you feel your feet have woken up, and the sole of the foot has been lightly stretched. The feet, the toes have been lightly flexed. And stand, see if you can just let your toes spread a little. Imagine they are hands. So you don't have to, you know, like hoofs, you know, <laughs> which they, they get to be like hoofs in a shoe. And open them up. They're intelligent creatures. We've got intelligence. So as we're standing, okay. Now you want your legs to be feel flexible, so lightly flex your knees. So the legs are not stiff and straight, they are slightly flexible. And um, 
coming up your legs. You can also just spring your knee around, like rotate, rotate your knees, flex your knees, um, and through the thighs to the pelvic pelvis region, and just imagine as if you're about to sit down. So you you know you flatten the back side as if your tail is about to go under as if you're about to sit down. What this does is it, it encourages the weight of the upper body to not rest on the hips. So normally when we stand, we tend to stand on our hips like one hip, the other hip, stand on one leg, the other leg, as if you've got a block in the middle of your body and you, you rest your upper body on this block, which is your pelvic region and so the energy your legs don't do very much and the energy of your body is broken into two or three zones one of the big breaks is around the waist um, because of that chair position another big break is under the, under the throat the head seems to be separated from the rest of the body so we take away the break as if the back naturally flows down smoothly into the legs. There's no distinct line between the two. As if your tailbone is slightly drooping, relaxing the buttocks, the glutes. You know. Similarly, don't throw your weight forward into the abdomen, relax your lower belly too. So you may sink a quarter of an inch so loosening the loosen the gut bring your arms slightly away from the sides of your body so you could easily slide a hand in between your arm and your ribs this you know. so also uh, aware that the body tends to be slightly um, contained because of impingement because of other people we we sort of slightly close the body it's typically the sensitive front of the body there's a certain closure and we hold ourselves uh, without really even notice it's a reflex so i just Relax, open yourself, open your chest, open the front with an awareness that's checking out. You know, everything's fine, nobody's bothering me, nothing to be on guard against. Fine. See if you can cultivate that attitude and that scanning for the entire torso, as if around my abdomen, my belly, nothing holding it back, it could be big if it's big, small if it's small, doesn't matter what shape it is, size it is, just let it be there and uh, there's no need to close it or screen it. safe from the views and opinions of other people or what we think they might be thinking about us. Entire torso. Let the arms be long, nothing to do nothing to do. Sweep your attention down the arm from the place where it joins the torso, the armpit, down to the crook of the arm, the elbow and the crook of the arm, the bend, the first bend. You can relax that bicep, tricep, down to the empty place in the crook of the arm. And then from that elbow down to the wrist, 
There is another empty place. The body is full of joints and every joint <laughs> has to have space in it, otherwise it won't work. So do these, are, these joints get seized up through muscles pulling, being only half relaxed. So the sinews tighten up, the joints disappear or are not felt as open spaces. You get stiff and clumsy. Come into the joints in your arm, your wrists. Oh yeah, can you open the joints? Let the limb be really loose and limp. Hands. Just feel the energies, the sensitivities in the hands. Throbbing, pulsing, warm, cool. Back of the hand, less sensitive. Palm of the hand, very sensitive. Fingertips, extremely sensitive. Let the fingers come away from each other, just slightly apart. Encourage the fingers to be loose. Open the joints in the fingers. Imagine the palm itself is like a, see, like a flower opening, palm steadily opening, gently opening, fingers rolling back. The effect of not being prepared, not on guard, not about to do something. Now, if you once again return to the feet, sole of the foot, like the palm of the hand, opening as if it's listening to the earth. Open. listening to the earth. What does open feel like? Bringing your awareness, bringing your mind into that open energy. Keeping in touch with that mental effect, that effect. If you're moving slowly, the soles of your feet up through the ankles, the knees, hip joints. Particularly where the leg joins the lower abdomen, we have a kind of a groove between the belly and the thigh. Imagine that groove opening. Mm, opening there. opening spaces.
both open and also firm. The openness is contained with a sense of firmness, connection to the earth, connection to the body, and the mind attentive. Being the abdomen swelling and subsiding with breathing, like a large uh, bag, easily swelling, easily subsiding. A lot of space in there. chest, like a basket of bones with air inside it, opening. Attend to the joint where the arm connects to the torso. You have another similar groove or cavity there similar to the place where the leg joins the abdomen a little notch or a little dent indentation there imagine that also opening the, the verb i'm using is imagining rather than making it so it's a very subtle inclination of mind it's like a, an invitation not a command not a no pressure just what would it be like if maybe hmm. and then continuing to the throat the openness within the throat the space around the throat is that safe comfortable uh, does it help if you sigh or hum so you've got an inner vibration there does that help or is it better in silence can you relax in your throat Coming up into the glottis, where the throat becomes the mouth, the back of the mouth, the tonsils, or where the nasal cavities descend. It's uh, way back, back of the mouth, back of the end, where the nasal chambers begin. Very junction it's a junction place keeping that place open relax the tongue let the breath come naturally and from here you can sense the rest of the head wrapped around this open space and relaxing the eye around the eyes, the forehead, the cheeks, the jaw. Keep the eyes open to maintain alertness.
maybe with time you can experience something like an open channel from the this place in the back of your mouth way down through the throat it's not exactly a physical feature that descend it has an openness coming down through the body and down into the floor like an upright open channel connecting to the soles of the feet Right above it is the crown of the head and the sky. So the full unfolding of the body's subtle energy system connects earth to sky and to space around you. It's, uh, there's no hard edges. And as you I encourage you just to in the next few minutes to next minute or two to take up your sitting position if you haven't done so already. And see if you can maintain some of that inner open channel from the base of your body, behind the voice box and into the head perhaps even to the, the crown. This is your midline axis and your breath energy will travel along that. It's not the same as the air, but it's the energy that the breath that gets the breathing going, which is one of the body's primary energetic functions is to do breathing. And if it does breathing, the energy moves through this channel that channel is clear, you feel very comfortable and steady. That's why the Buddha taught mindfulness of breathing. I recommend you keep your eyes open this time, particularly on the retreat and the early days, keep your eyes open without looking at anything particular. This is because um, it helps to prevent one getting dragged into the mind. So these external senses, when they're not, not activated, they're just on, they're there. But they're not activated, but looking for something. The eyes aren't switching around, focusing on something. They're in its latent state. That is a restful quality to the eyes that are not moving. And so then we use the, these external senses as a stabilizing influence to stand against the pull of the mind the preoccupations, the psychologies, the obsessiveness, the 
you know, introvertedness of it. Here's the, 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 the latency of the eyes. It's with just, there is seeing without looking at anything. Okay. Hearing silence. Without sounds may come and go, but we're not making anything out of that. Feeling the skin. Sensations rushing across that, but that's not the topic. Topic is to be the whole body. And so then these, the message of the mindfulness immersed in the body travels out to the other senses and they will help to restrain the thinking, brooding mind. Within that, or within that form, you may sense the flow of breathing flowing through that channel, through that form. Uh, keep it light. Let it just be like a breeze blowing through a form. Uh, it's a cooling, calming influence.
So energy takes time to um, settle and balance. If you can imagine something like a fluid and some of the channels have been blocked or got twisted. So you get clogs and you get energy building up because it can't get through because the channels have closed or been lost or something blocked up. So it takes time for this uh, stuff to you know, flow through. But the energy knows what it's doing. The body wants to arrive at that wholeness, that fullness. So we just support the basic support of all meditation practice, the basic foundation, the atmosphere is one of goodwill, kindness, sympathy, empathy, compassion, encouragement. Uh, uh, on dismantling the pressure of achievement or progress or mental uh, energy the kind of energy that we use in doing work in the world. Here we operate at the rate of the body. Mm. Mm. And the, uh, the guide I would offer is to whenever you find yourself feeling sort of agitated experiences or compressed experiences or things seem you discoordinated, try to widen your attention to include the entire web. If you can't really feel it, just imagine the web from the crown of your head down to the soles of your feet. If you imagine it, the likelihood is, is that gradually the body will remember it too. So you can lead it with a, how is it in my calves? How is it in my ankles? How is it in my fingertips? Uh, we're kind of spreading the web wide rather than, oh, I've got this really funny sensation in my throat. What's, what's that? So you go into it. Don't go into areas that are congested because that puts more congestion more traffic into the same area. You want the traffic to move from that area. So you remind it there's other places it could go. It could move down your arm into your hand. It could move down your throat into your belly. It could move from your belly down into the floor. So you've got to keep reminding it and presenting those possibilities. Is the feet, is the back, yeah, here's the feet, here's the back, here's the span of the chest. You don't have to be scrunched up in one corner of it. There's the whole span of the chest. Yeah, the throat, there's air and space inside the throat and it goes all the way down into your belly, plenty of room. And this widening and softening allows, encourages energy to level. To, to discharge are like water. It's all kind of locked up and you open up a little channel and the water naturally drains to the right level. Um, I don't know how it will do that, when it will do that, how quick it will go, but you that's not up to you to know, but you present the possibilities and feel and listen, remember? Don't just instruct, but listen. Listen to the body empathically. Something feels strained. Feel strained. Where's the comfortable place? Connect the strained place to the comfortable place. With you know, sense that. Yeah, palms, my hands feel really. Yeah, so the chest feels slightly tense, but if I connect that to the crook of my arm, my wrist, palm of my hand, oh, palm of the hand starts the slight movement and opens up and the energy moves. 
the kind of thing that can happen. There's always a lot happening for the face. It's an extremely uh, active area. This is, but it, most of it has no other function except to express, to give signals, to express moods, feelings. It's a language. The face is an embodied language system. It's often very talkative and but you realize it's only mm, a third of your head. So drawing your attention, face feels hot or twitchy, mouth. That is why your attention to include sides of your head, back of the head, crown of the head and where the neck and the head meet. This is your main energy or channel to discharge energy, excess energy from your face. Take, take it down the back, down the back. You don't do it, you just make those connections and Relax.
to the last few minutes of this um, guided period. Um, allow yourself to move slightly. When I move slightly, I mean just like turning the head. That kind of speed. But instead of turning your head because something else said there is pulling you, just explore the ability of the head to slowly move with nothing pulling it. And then maybe an arm. And, uh, so have a 10 minutes or so and I'll ring a bell and if you want to um, you know you can switch off your video so you can be feel very private you want to you know wherever you want to move and um, of course you can take a few deep breaths if you want to do that and uh, breathe out you know, move your arms around, spin, just loosen up, just loosen up, take some time consciously and deliberately loosening up in an uncontrived and unpremeditated way, exploring movement of space in space. And what's it like just to be in this no pressure, allowing light quality, muscles not gripping, face relaxed, no great purpose, yeah, feeling, feeling embodiment, letting energies be expressed, move around, rather than driven or programmed to some functional purpose on the external world. Mm. It's like a kind of a dol dolphin or a, yeah, rolling in the tides.
So we're coming to closure in uh, five minutes or so. Um, numbers don't really mean much, but just giving an idea. And so you can continue where you are in your own space. Or you might like to just sit down, be quiet and let things settle. Mm -hmm. I'll just keep uh, uh, reminders. Remember the space around you is part of what you're sensitive to. If you move through it, feel it. Feel the sense of absence of pressure if you move through space. So we are always in space. Space is the absence of pressure. Wonderful. Mm. To be enjoyed. A lot of the time we're just rushing through space to the next imperative. <laughs> <laughs> this is lovely space always there space is also within the body we seize up you know, the joints the openness in behind in the mouth and the eye cavities openness in the hands it's a very intimate part of our embodied experience a place where the pressure stops where we're just receptive and open uh, it's around us, it's within us, it's part of the web of experience. And things, it doesn't, this is where the floods block it up. So if you increase your awareness of space, it does help to drain some of the flooding effects. Of course, you can often feel disoriented, woozy. That's why you do it slowly and you keep strong sense of feet, ground, back, here. If things seem very unsteady, sit down, feel the firmness of your tissues on the floor, cushion the seat, or if you're lying down, back, you know, something grounded there, given to you. Don't have to make an effort to find the ground. It's there for you. And just listen to those tones, something that's there for you, supportive, something that's there for you, openness. Yeah. And how important it is to receive and really take up the invitation for openness when it's there. In this very composed way, we're not going to go crazy there's no pressure mm. so we're gonna yeah mm. and it's it's uh, so easy just to say oh we put it poison back to sitting meditation standing walking maybe reclining mostly it's sitting and walking but the body does a lot more than sit and walk. It, what about all the inner, inner, the rest of it, the moving of the hands, the flexions, the getting up, the twisting, the whole, you know, the fluidities of it all. It can be so robotic in meditation. You know, see so if you go clock, I'm in my sitting bit and then switch, my standing bit and then switch, my walking bit. Uh, you know, creating segments when really, you know, once you release some of those, you can, even in sitting, you can feel the fluidities of the body and you know, the breathing because you're, it's always fluid. Standing, sitting, walking is a fluidity, water element. There's mobility, air element, there's groundedness, earth element, there's vitality, fire element, and the space. So don't get too fixated on the categories of walking, standing, sitting. Get to the essentials and then you help to the body to find its own intelligence. And that intelligence can begin to release the blockages in the energy system. And you feel a stability 
which at the same time is quite light and open. So I'll take leave of you now, and I uh, would like to join you again in an hour's time, if you're, if you're available, and then we can um, continue to practice together for another couple of hours. Some questions on meditation. Okay, so I'll take my leave. Be well. Thank <clears throat> you.